So after Eric's introduction, <coughs> I just want to give a little UK perspective about how we're thinking about this whole area across multiple committees in the UK. Obviously, as Eric said, it's all being driven by this cost. Here it's, of course, in pounds rather than dollars, but it's the same sort of picture. Full genome sequencing is approaching the cost of the kind of clinical tests which are already being done inside our health system. Of course, we have an NHS system, you know, comprehensive healthcare in the UK. Um, you can see a point where those lines are going to cross and it's going to be worth thinking about storing individual sequences and um, processing over those. So there have been a number of committees looking at the kind of things you need over a number of years. These are a few of the high points. Um, firstly, linking those kind of research activities. We have the Medical Research Council, the Wellcome Trust, funders like that, sorry? A little closer to the, the microphone, right. And then we have the NHS, which also has a research side, and so there was a creation of an office to kind of link those two together. And one of the things that came out of that was a board looking at health records. Um, and so, you know, the, the need to have, you know, a generic ability to research over health records. We have some legal provisions that makes that, makes that feasible in terms of ethics. It's a question of, of actually putting in place the infrastructure. And so we have some representatives from the Scottish program here and also from the, um, one of the English programs, um, John Parkinson. So, so that's one side. Then, of course, there's the genomic side. So there was a House of Laws report in 2009 saying that something was happening in genomics and the medical system would, should start taking that into account. And the government's response to that has been the creation of a committee which has been looking at this whole area, this human genome strategy group. So what do you need, come, coming out of some of those discussions, what do you really need to make this feasible? You know, at the top you've got healthcare professionals, the bottom, you've got the kind of research activities in yellow, the sequencing type things, and then the sort of patient record researching over those. So, you know, down here, we have the kind of research activities, NHGRI, Wellcome Trust, Sanger, EBI, are involved in the UK sort of side of things, is EBI and Sanger. Um, we have the reference genome. So you can start thinking about a healthcare professional producing asking for a whole genome sequence and comparing that with the reference sequence and ending up with just a variant file and attaching that to the patient record. It's small enough to attach to the patient record. Those patient records, you know, they exist inside um, GP surgeries. You could attach files for images there, so there's no reason why you can't attach uh, you know, a, summary of a, of a summary of variants. So once you've got that, so what you, what's actually missing in terms of being able to analyze that, use it in a clinical setting in a sort of you know, large scale way as opposed to the sort of individual gene tests we have right now? Well, certainly this sort of annotation, I think that's the crux of this meeting. In our discussions in the UK, if you go and look at the House of Lords report, it was proposing a whole institute saying that this needs some sort of institute to address that kind of delivery at the edge of regulation. Um, but you also need this actual infrastructure to do the comparison. Um, we think, well, that could be this institute providing some of those services, but it could also be a whole load of small companies, SMEs, providing different competing services to GPs, to medical professionals. But in, in order to enable that, actually it's important that that underlying data set, the database, is open data so that lots of different people can get access to that and it can interoperate with other countries, you know, other countries' data sets. Then there's the other side, which is research over this, because whatever you put in that database is going to be driven by what you can extract from the information um, across, you know, maybe the whole country's um, records if, if you start sequencing everybody. And so we have this research capability program which is being set up to aggregate patient records. If those patient records have genetic data, that could be a point for doing that research as well. Of course, there's other types of data. There's cancer data, pathogen data. can all kind of be fit into the same sort of framework. Um, but the bottom line is 
if you've got this, these systems, you've got the research database, there's lots of variants, you've got very few that have been identified as clinical ones, in terms of the funders, in terms of the policy makers within the National Health Service, they want to know, am I going to get benefit if I start sequencing people, at what point am I actually going to get improved health care? And you know, it's really a cost-benefit analysis, where do these two lines cross? And I think that's an area where we don't know. It relates directly to how we define clinical variants of, you know, that are significant um, and how many we can define. Um, so this is the sort of, this is the, the overall picture. It's clearly there's this feedback loop in the middle. And I think one thing that's going to come out of this is that if you look at the funding that has been going on up to now, in the past, all the genome data that's been feeding into this process has been coming through, you know, the kind of research activities, Wellcome Trust funded, NIH funded. But if this connection to a large number of individuals within the health system is made, that's going to become the dominant source of information in the future. That's going to drive this kind of analysis rather than the research-led things coming out of, doctor, of hospitals. I think the other thing is that this is just the start of digital medicine. So this is genomic medicine, you know, looking at variants, but there's talk within the EU of much broader projects building you know, digital integration of lots of other types of data around the patient, um, images, other types of high throughput data. And there's, in fact, a, f a project, there's a proposal for flagship p projects, large-scale um, developments funded in the next framework program. And there's a pilot going on at the moment called IT Future of Medicine, which is around producing virtual patients around in digital integration. So that's all I'm going to say. Just to acknowledge the different groups that have fed into this. There have been lots and lots of discussions over the last five years in the UK around what's necessary to make this happen. I think this is going to be an important meeting in terms of this defining this, how do you capture the variants which are going to feed into the clinical value. Thanks very much. Now, so I'd like to introduce Rex, who's going to come up after me, who's on the coaching.